All right, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Stephanie Morris, and I'm the Director of Career Services. And joining me today as co-host is Julie Candela from the Admissions Office. Thank you, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Julie Candela. I work in the Admissions Office. I have for the past five years. I did graduate from Niagara in 2013 with my bachelor's degree in Communication Studies. And you know, a lot of my family went to Niagara. I love the school. I had to come back home. And I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm a senior assistant director um, of undergraduate admissions. So any questions you may have, I know we have a kind of mix of attendees on the event today, but I'll be here to help you and answer questions at the end, but also can help you apply. Any of your friends who want to apply, send them my way. And I can't wait to hear your stories today. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. So joining us today, we have uh, three alumni all of which are employed by the Clorox company. And so I am not going to steal their thunder, but instead I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves. Um, so Rachel, would you like to start? Sure, hi, my name is Rachel Ruskowski and I am a senior sales analyst with Clorox. So I work on Northeast Great Lakes Grocery currently. And as Stephanie mentioned, I am a Niagara alum. I got my undergraduate degree at Niagara graduated in 2017 in communications and marketing. And then I went straight through and I got my MBA in strategic marketing a couple years later. And Maddie? Yeah, hi, I'm Maddie D'Alessandro. I'm a field sales analyst on the Burt's Bee sales planning team. And just like Rachel, I'm also an alum. I graduated in 2020, so right when COVID hit. Um, with my bachelor's in marketing and communications, and I'm actually a current MBA student for strategic marketing, and I'll be done in May. Wonderful. And Olivia. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia Copeland. I am currently a sales planning analyst on the Clorox Vitamin business. I also am a Niagara alum. I graduated from the food and CPG marketing program in May of 2019, and then I finished my MBA of strategic marketing in May of 2020. Wonderful. So one of the things that we like to really talk to current students about, as well as prospective students, is all of the different opportunities that are available for students on our campus to help them get to whatever that next step is. So whether it's employment or it's going on to graduate school, um, so if you could each share a little bit about what that experience, the NU experience was like for you, and what are some of the opportunities that you think helped you to land an internship and or land a job or both? Um, so Maddie, would you like to start? Yeah. Um, so I was a commuter all four years. So going right into it, I knew that I would have to put um, in a little bit extra effort to be on campus and have my face seen and join some clubs. And let me tell you, boy, did I join some clubs. I was a part of Women's Health and Fitness. I was a part of the Reading Club, the Niagara Marketing Association, the Public Relations Student Society. I was on campus programming board as the promotions co-chair. I was in student government on cabinet my senior year. Um, and then I was also an orientation lead leader over the summers. So just by doing that, it created me a well-rounded individual. I was able to build relationships with the faculty, staff, professors, and then also it allowed me to get internships. I had three internships. Um, one in my sophomore year, one in my junior, and then one in my senior year. And one of my internships actually allowed me to become a marketing coordinator at the local hospital right by Niagara. So it was very much taking all those opportunities that Niagara has to offer and then turning it into what you want to do with them. And that just really helped me with my career. Then also having those relationships with my professors, I was able to one, become close to them. I was able to get in all the courses that I really wanted to be in and be interested in. And then those courses, of course, allowed me to become more academically, um, achieve well and graduate on time and um, allowed me to become just a well-rounded individual. And for that, I was just forever grateful. Wonderful. Olivia, how about for you? So my story is definitely a little different from Maddie's. Like Maddie, I was actually a commuter uh, my whole time at Niagara. So 
I also got very involved. I was in the Women's Health and Fitness Club. I was a part of the Food Marketing Association, the Marketing Association at the time. And interesting though, I actually started undecided. So I didn't know coming into Niagara what I wanted to do. And actually a huge selling point of Niagara for me was the academic exploration program. So I was in that program and I loved it because I got to explore a couple different fields without ever getting behind. So through that program, I found uh, marketing and I absolutely loved marketing. And then, and you launched their food and CPG marketing program, which I originally thought was really going to limit me. But then one class in the program, I just knew that this is where my passion lies. And the program had amazing resources. It had tons of connects through like industry leaders like Clorox. And so then I really like stuck with it and ran with the food and CPG marketing program. So through that program, I was able to go on multiple class trips. I went to Chicago, I went to San Diego for some case competitions. And then another case competition I actually got to do was Clorox and NU flew me out to Atlanta, Georgia. So in Atlanta, Georgia, I remember competing and I thought, this is such a long shot. This company is like too good to be true. I'm just a measly college student. And that case competition actually turned into an amazing internship offer in Cincinnati, Ohio. So that's where I did my internship with Clorox and I lived there for the summer. And then after that, I was able to get a full-time offer for Fort Lauderdale for Clorox. So I'm in Fort Lauderdale currently. And honestly, it's all thanks to Niagara. I could not be where I am today with all all the amazing connects there. I also did an amazing internship at Rich Products, which I'm really thankful for, which was a really good foot in the door to the food industry as well. But yeah, so that was a little bit of my experience from undecided of a major to here. It's been a journey, but we got here. (laughs) That's wonderful. I I was not aware that you started off in the academic exploration program. So I think it's always good for people to understand that you know, you might not always know what it is that you want to do, but there's all these systems in place and these opportunities on our campus to help you to get to an end goal, right? Um, so Rachel, would you like to share your, your story? Sure. So my story is actually kind of similar to both Maddie's and Olivia's. So I was also a commuter throughout my time at Niagara, and I was a little concerned that I wouldn't be getting a full college experience, but At Niagara, there are so many different clubs that are offered. And if there isn't a club that, if if there is a club that you want to start, you have the ability to do that. Um, So I I did have the opportunity to start my own sustainability club on campus. So that was definitely very exciting. And like Olivia, I also started in the academic exploration program. When I went to college, I think I was between like three different fields. And it was pretty intimidating to choose a school, especially if I didn't know where I wanted my career path to go. So having that at Niagara was definitely a game changer for me. And it really did help me determine uh, what career I wanted to go into without falling behind. And I would definitely say outside of the clubs, there's also a number of different programs that Niagara offers. So they have so many different study abroad programs and I was able to take advantage of that and work that into my schedule again without falling behind. So that was definitely a great opportunity there. I was also in the honors program throughout my time there. So I was able to mix with students of different degrees and such and get different connections. And for me, I I would definitely say I, I tried to take advantage of the career services office while I was there. And I remember I met with them pretty early on in my college career. And I was able to go to different events like career fairs, have them review my resume. And for me, that was a big game changer. I know I landed my first internship through a college career fair at Niagara. And then I also interned at Rich Products after that. So my first internship was with Geico. My second one was was with Rich Products and Career Services helped me get that internship as well. And then when I came to Clorox, I'm a little dated now because the Clorox competition wasn't a thing back then. So 
but I was actually referred by one of my marketing professors to apply to Clorox and I landed an internship and here I am today. That's wonderful. So the big question for a lot of prospective students is why Niagara University? So you shared your opportunities once you were on campus. But when you were considering colleges, why did you choose Niagara University? And Rachel, we'll, we'll stick with you for this question sure. to start, and then we'll ask Maddie and Olivia to weigh in. Yeah, definitely. So for me, I would say at Niagara, I did not feel like I would be a number. I wasn't the type of person who wanted to be in a classroom with 200 plus students and kind of get washed out. I really wanted to have more of that personal connection with my professors and then also have more of a community feel on campus. And for me, I, I just thought I couldn't get that from going to like a state school where there's so many different students on campus. And like just having that opportunity at Niagara was something that I really looked forward to. And I would say for anyone who has been on the Niagara campus, I don't know what it is, but all of the students are like extra friendly. I remember when I toured, there was a student that just came up to me and my family. And she just said, hey, it looks like you're touring the campus. Do you want to sit down with me? And you could ask me any questions about Niagara and I'll answer them for you. So I feel like you just don't find that type of person everywhere. So it was definitely a, a huge selling point for me. Olivia, how about you? So I knew that I, like Rachel, I didn't want to be a number and I really wanted to have connections with not only professors, but students, and even more so kind of looping back to the academic exploration program, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I knew that I wasn't just trying to go to school to get some random degree to not have a career at the end. And Niagara was one of the only schools that had a really collective laid out program to help me kind of figure it out. It is kind of a lot to ask an 18 year old, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And I think the academic exploration program was a huge selling point for me for Niagara because the advisors meet with you one on one, you really lay out your program, you really try to figure out your interests, and they really talk you through and advise you the best way to go about that. And me, Rachel, and so many other students have had such amazing experiences with that. And then on top of that, I will say, right from the get-go, professors have real world work experience. They're not always the academics that you might find at a really big school. They're professors that have worked in the industry for so long, and now they're coming to teach you everything they knew from the real world. And I think that that was so valuable to me, especially entering my career. So I think Niagara, the community is amazing. The people are amazing. And on top of all of that, I got such a quality education of just the most amazing people, the most amazing connections from all of it. So that's why Niagara for me. And Maddie, why Niagara? Well, it's funny because when I first started as a student, I was a bio major going for pre-dental. So when I first toured the campus, I was immediately attracted to the science building, Galisano. It was brand new and gorgeous. And I loved just the overall vibe and atmosphere that you got when walking around the campus. I immediately just felt comfortable. I took a tour and my tour guide was so personable and conversational and he really made me feel like I was a part of something already. And I didn't even put down my deposit yet. So that was a huge selling point for me, just already feeling included a part of the family. The Purple Pride was just running through the streets and I just love how close the buildings were. I didn't wanna go any anywhere big, just like Rachel and Olivia. I didn't wanna be a number. I wanted to make sure that whatever I was going to get involved in or what I did would make a larger impact, um, even though there might be less students at a larger school. But then it also allowed me to become a face on campus, have a voice, um, talk at open houses, become an orientation leader. And it just kind of all snowballed into all the involvement opportunities and the academic achievements just by having your name and your face out there um, and having that one-on-one -on -one personal time with faculty and staffs or professors to just um, have you become the best student you can be. 
But then also another big selling point is when I knew that Niagara was the one for me was the orientation summer program session. Um, you were able to tour the campus on your own, meet people, and that was your first experience of actually becoming a Purple Eagle. Um, so there was a glow party, there was midnight bingo, there was all these little things and all the orientation leaders just automatically made you feel like you're one of them. And so that right there just immediately made me feel like I had made the right decision right off the bat. So we're gonna shift gears a little bit here, right? So I wanna talk a little bit about your roles at Clorox. You know, what should students know about the opportunities that are there? Um, I have to admit, when I initially thought of Clorox, I'm like bleach, right? That's that's what Clorox does, they do bleach. Um, and then you quickly learn that it's so much bigger than that and it spans so many more brands. Um, so, you know, I'll just kind of, what do you think people need to know about Clorox? And if you were to talk to a current student that was listening to this and saying, you know what, I want to get there, what are some of the advice that you would give them um, in terms of steps that they need to take or opportunities that they need to embrace in order to best position themselves uh, with Clorox? So Olivia, do you want to take this one first? Sure, I'll start us off. So I think something really unique about Clorox and to really take it to heart to any prospective student is be authentically yourself all day, every day. They see you for who you are and they appreciate you for who you are. And it sounds very cliche, but it's very true. And Rachel and Maddie can also attest to this. You can bring yourself to work every single day and just be yourself, be, have your personality. And if you make those connections with people early on in the company, they really see you for that and they really respect you for that. Another thing is just be bold. And it's something in the Clorox culture you're gonna hear a lot, but really don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid, even if you're making new Clorox connections and you're trying to look for the opportunity, ask unique questions. Be wanting to find out more. What could you be capable of in the company? And I would say my last piece of advice is don't let like a job title scare you away from the job itself. I will definitely say just so don't be afraid to try new things. My title right now is sales planning analyst. Did I ever think I was going to be in sales, let alone sales analytics? Absolutely not. But it is way more fun than you'd ever think. It's way more dynamic and you're just working with such amazing fun people all day that really make your job really worth it. So I would say just don't be afraid to try new things and always look into something deeply before judging a book by its cover. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, so Olivia, I mean, those are great points that you made about Clorox. And first I'll say, since the three of us are all in sales, one of the big things for me is I always thought sales was all about cold calling, but in reality, it's not like that anymore. Um, definitely not at Clorox. So it, it's all about mining through data and you're telling a story. It's a storytelling role. So you have to be able to go through data, pick out main points, and then tell it as a story to your customer. So in my case, it'll be a grocery store chain like Wegmans and then how that's impactful. So I definitely didn't know that when I took on a sales role. So that was something very exciting to me to learn that about the Clorox company that being a sales analyst is not like that stereotypical salesman type um, role there. So that, that was definitely something that stood out. And like Olivia was saying, truly be your authentic self um, they're not looking for you to fit a mold. They want you to truly be you and they'll be able to work with you. And I would say like my managers have all worked with me very closely and they really care about my development and they'll help to get me projects that'll help put me in the right direction where I see myself going. So definitely getting that interaction at Clorox, I feel like you don't necessarily find that at all companies, um, how much people just care about their coworkers and they want to see you learn and grow. So 
I would say like for a student who's interested in, in coming to work at Clorox, I would say one, don't be intimidated that Clorox is such a big name. I know when I first met with Clorox, I just thought like there's no way I would land an internship with them. But here I, I was able to do that. And then Olivia was able to do that. And Maddie was able to do that. And that was something that I don't think any of us ever thought that we would be able to do. So I just feel like if the three of us can do it, you can do it too. And Maddie, how about you? Yeah, well, thank you, Rachel. You definitely took my biggest piece of advice. Um, but I would say also, don't be intimidated. Don't let your second guesses get in the way. I know when I first started, I wasn't even sure or confident in myself that I should do the Clorox case competition at Niagara. But when I sat down with one of my professors and I asked him if this was actually worth it for me to do, he said, yes, just go for it. Don't let anything else get in the way. And so I did it. And I never would have thought that I would be moving to Durham, North Carolina a year later with my field sales analyst role. But what's cool about my role is that I get to work directly with some of the retailers and sit in some buyer meetings just to learn about the business and how Clorox and especially Burt's Bees interacts with Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Alta. Those are primarily the retailers that I work with. So it's extremely interesting to learn about what the retailers do to get Burt's Bees in their doors, but then also what do we have to do to make sure that we can get on those shelves. And just from the packaging to everything and how it just visibly looks on the shelves is just insane. And it's so cool to be a, bit a part of something so much larger. So I would say, don't second guess yourself. Don't think that you can't do something and don't feel not smart enough because even when I first joined, I only took one Excel course. I didn't know anything, any of the terminology, any of the acronyms that we use, and we have a lot. Um, but then every single employee wants you to do well and they will meet with you and they, were, they will answer any question that you have. And like I said, just like Niagara, Clorox will also make you feel so comfortable and, and a part of something much larger, even though that you might just be one person and digging through one report or pulling some form of data. Everybody is there to contribute to Clorox and it is, it's amazing. So yeah. You guys are you guys are wonderful in telling your stories. So I had a question that just kind of came to mind, but you know something that is a concern for a lot of people is um, how the last year has been spent, right? Um, with the COVID nineteen pandemic, we do have some students who had internships that maybe were postponed, some were canceled, some were just cut short, um, or maybe they couldn't source an internship. And so in the career services office, when students come to us with these concerns, we talk to them a lot about demonstrating how they've been resilient over this last year, right? Or I've challenged some students to take a look at opportunities that you're interested in and try to improve a skill that you maybe before were viewing as a weakness or that you just don't feel 100% comfortable with. What would be some of those skills that you think would be important for somebody interested in Clorox to try to develop that could help them in, um, in the interview situation and any like test runs as part of, the, of an, an internship? What would you recommend? Um, Maddie, do you want to take this first? Yeah, um, my big one is one of my daily mantras, but it's to have a say yes mindset. So even though you might just be stuck inside, consistently practice on your communication skills, your data, just play around in Excel if you wanted. Um, do your homework and attend your Zoom classes. It's all those little things that will contribute to get the ball rolling to help you with your career. Um, and I would definitely say, even in terms of the business side, just some of the general strategies. And even if you're just glancing through a textbook, but it's all those little things to keep yourself preoccupied, preoccupied, keep your mind sharp, even though you're indoors and you're just not doing a lot sometimes um, and stay motivated. Um, it, it will all contribute to who you will be once you walk across that stage. So all the little steps that you can take in terms of just a little Excel formula, or some YouTube videos on how to do something, it will help. So those are my big go-to strategies to stay, 
to stay sharp. Olivia, how about you? So I would say I'm a firm believer that a company can teach any hard skill that they want you to know, but soft skills come from within you. So I would say during this downtime that students may have, really take this time to focus in and hone in on your soft skills abilities. So just learning how to effectively communicate to people, how to interview well, how to understand different people's perspectives, I think is a huge thing in the work environment that sometimes goes very underrated. So I would say just really honing in on those skills. And then on top of that, um, kind of to Maddie's point, if you do have a specific career path in mind, also spend your extra time trying to educate yourself on that, or even more so, if you know someone in the industry or you're trying to connect with someone, go to those connects on LinkedIn, search a career field on LinkedIn, and just send a few people some messages to kind of go about and get their perspectives on it. Uh, LinkedIn's a great resource, and I highly recommend that to any student, but I would say mainly focus on soft skills and then really just try to build those connections while you have some free time. I think that building connection, there's never an off time and there's never a bad time. So always just keep on working at that because you never know who you're gonna meet, who you're gonna connect with, who could really help you in your future. Thank you, and Rachel? Yeah, I'm going to play off of what both Maddie and Olivia said. So like Maddie, like I definitely found that having skills in Excel, particularly for a Clorox role is very important. It's definitely something that you can learn when you go into the job, but it'll really set you apart if you already have experience using different platforms. So if you could challenge yourself, maybe look up some YouTube videos on different Excel tips and tricks that you can do um, in your off time. I definitely recommend that. And kind of like what Olivia was saying, anyone can learn the hard skills in a job but also having those soft skills are super important. And I'm also going to say another element that will help set you apart is if you're a strategic thinker who's always thinking about the big picture. And I know Niagara definitely um, has that mindset, always pulling it back to the big picture, especially in the MBA program, I'll add. Um, so definitely keeping that in mind to really set yourself apart but then working on those soft skills. I mean, we're in virtual calls plenty of times every day, and this is just the environment that we're in now. So really like learning to do those effectively and taking advantage of those will really set you apart as well. So I guess one piece of advice that I would give um, is to look for different networking events and definitely go out of your comfort zone. I remember before I went to Clorox, I decided to do networking events and it was all for basically science related people. And I was able to go outside and learn new things from people I never would have met in the business field. So challenging myself to do that, I felt like I was better prepared when I started at Clorox and I was meeting new people all the time. So I would say that's definitely something that anyone can look into, especially virtually. And there are pros to being in a, in a virtual environment. We're able to meet with people all over the country now and all over the world. So it, definitely try to take advantage of that where you can and even try to find a mentor. I, I have multiple mentors and I've learned so much from them. So if you do have a connection or if you know someone who may have a connection that could set you up with someone, I definitely would say to take advantage of that. That's really great advice. A um, couple of things that I just wanted to, to mention because all of you kind of touched on this. And um, if you don't mind, I'm going to give career services a little plug here. But um, it, with regards to mentoring, um, so this would be for incoming students or even some of our current students that are on the call. Um, Career Services is partnering with the College of Business um, and we are formalizing what we're calling Mentoring NU. So it is an opportunity to connect current students with business leaders um, and we have a process in place seems to be working. This is our first semester, so I would call this our pilot semester. Um, but so far, the, the feedback from students has been great. 
So if that's something that students are interested in, I encourage them to connect with our office um, and then we will begin the process for that. Um, in terms of like the networking and the LinkedIn, absolutely. There are lots of opportunities um, to be to network with employers. So even though we don't have employers coming to our physical campus, we still have a lot of those employer connections. So, um, you know, these three alumni that are on this call, I'm sure that they would be happy to help any current student if we could uh, share your information. But even outside of them, there are a lot of um, companies and alums that are always willing to give back um, to Niagara in that way. And so I encourage you to connect with career services early um, and often, I like to say. So I'm going to open it up to questions. I don't know if um, some students have some questions. You can type them in the chat box. If you'd like to unmute, you could do that as well. We're a small enough group. Um, so I'll, I'll give a minute and see. Um, if anybody has anything that maybe wasn't answered. And then if not, um, Julie will share some information regarding the admissions process um, with everybody as well. I just wanna say what a great job you all did. Like I'm looking up to you like, you know, you know, just if I could go back in time a little bit, had I taken a little bit more advantage of the career services office and everything that you do, um, that's awesome and where it got you. So anyways, uh, I'm here for questions, but I wanted to just go over the admissions process a little bit. So at Niagara, um, of course, we're a four-year private university, Vincentian. Um, we are one of the largest private schools in Western New York. So we have about 3000 undergraduate students, which does make us a little bit bigger than some of the private schools in Buffalo and even in Rochester um, for that matter. And should you want to come to Niagara, know that we have over 80 different majors. And as two of you started in academic exploration, that is a great way to start too, if you are undecided. That way you won't be transferring into other majors and falling behind and graduating in four years, it'll actually keep you on track, um, help you see what your interests are and try to help you find the right major for you so that you can get out of here on time. Um, but we also have our College of Arts and Sciences, which has um, outstanding, most of our programs, outstanding programs like nursing, theater, criminal justice, biology, criminal justice, just a few to mention. We have an outstanding education program. We have a hospitality um, college here at Niagara too, which actually has our sports management program within it, which is really cool. And we also have our college of business, which is huge and obviously ties into career services very often as well. Um, so just know there's a lot of different options for you at Niagara. We will help you find that path. Even if you end up going for a major at Niagara with the help of career services, and also just from within yourself, you probably could end up in a career career field you didn't expect to see yourself in. I mean, I have even family members who went for, you know, history who now work at m and Bank and things like that, things you didn't see yourself doing that Niagara, Niagara can help you get there. And also with all your different connections and networking, like we've been talking about, will help you too. But the application is free. You can apply on the common application or at niagara.edu on our website. We are looking for, obviously, your official high school transcript from your guidance office. We love one or two letters of recommendation. We love a strong essay if you have it. And also, we're test optional, especially due to COVID for every single major across the board. And But we would love to see your SAT or ACT scores if you, you know, feel strongly about your scores and we're, we're able to take them. And of course, once you get everything into us, you'll be assigned to an admissions counselor like myself. And I cover the New York City areas right now and some local schools. So we'll hopefully get back to you within a couple of weeks, especially now that um, it's starting to get into the fun where there's more like accepted student events going on. We should be able to get an answer to you pretty fast. But I just wanted you to know that, you know, once you get that part in, the next step will definitely have to do with the merit scholarship that you get based on that, we get really generous merit scholarships between 10 and 23,000. And then also financial aid comes into play. So you'll fill out the FAFSA, which opened up in October. You'll get a financial aid package with us. And then you can work with us to help you get to Niagara by 
you know, cutting the costs of your package a little bit if need be. And then of course we want you to join events like this and hopefully come in person and tour so that you can experience Niagara because it's really hard to commit to a school without, you know, knowing, without seeing the campus and, and feeling it. Actually, before this call, I was on with a student from Long Island and I said, you know, she said NU was her top choice. I said, are you going to come visit? So, you know, hopefully she's going to come visit soon. So that'll really help you make your decision. But just know the admissions office is always there for you um, from now until the very end when classes start. But um, a lot of exciting events are coming up and decision day is May 1st. But of course, we will take you into Niagara whenever you're ready. So thank you. Thanks, Julie. So it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. Um, so with that being said, I just want to thank um, Rachel, Maddie, and Olivia for taking time um, out of their day to spend with us today. Um, I am confident that we will have some students that will be looking to connect with you soon. Um, and Julie, thanks for uh, co-hosting tonight. Yeah. Um, so with that said, have a good evening, everybody. And um, we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes,